I have a lot of emails and I save every single one of them from cancer patients. Those people really inspire us. The problems with current cancer treatments, the drugs are terrible and they make you sick. The goal is to poison the cancer cells, but they potentially poison every cell, right? Because they're not targeted. How do we make better drugs to, to treat cancer safely and effectively so it doesn't disrupt people's lives so much? Nanotechnology can sound really scary. So I thought that bringing these two terms together, nano and robot, the robot is evocative. People have an idea of, of what that might mean. But nano is something that most people haven't thought about very much. Nano is a billionth of a meter. That's the sweet spot for building things out of really, really tiny particles. And that's what nano means, right? It's, it's basically tiny. The prototype that we built, it's actually simpler than what you might think of as a robot. <laughs> you start with kind of a box or a cage, and then we wanted something that could open. And that requires that we take that box and kind of put hinges on it so that it can pop open. You can put a drug inside and keep it safe and away from healthy cells until you do sense and then compute the identity of a cancer cell. For the specific prototype that we built, we had kind of a make or break moment where we put our nanorobots together with different types of cancer cells, mixed them together, and then just looked at whether or not we could even target one type of cell and not another in the same test tube, and then that seemed to work. And so that was a great moment in the lab. <laughs> it's first about convincing yourself that it's possible, but then the way science works is you don't just convince yourself, right? You have to convince the rest of the world. Usually there's about a 10 to 15 year lead time from something that works really well in the lab to seeing clinical trials in patients. So we're working as fast as we can. 